to the Corner to Corner podcast. My name is Jeff, and uh, as always, as you probably know by now, I'm joined by my good friend Paul. Hi there. How are you doing tonight? Yeah, I'm really good, thanks. Uh, you've put on another random accent. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I don't know. I don't know where it was going. It was just I thought, I thought it might be fun, and it wasn't actually. It was really disappointing. So you know, that's just like well, I, don't, I don't know if it's disappointing. It. We'll, we'll let people uh, they can comment. And let you can know. be the judge of this. Yeah. Uh, so we're not alone tonight. Uh, we're joined no. by a voice. Um, well, not it's not just a, it's not a disembodied voice, uh, but a voice that might be <laughs> recognisable to many big Finnish listeners. Uh, it's Beth Chalmers with us tonight. Yeah. Hello, Beth. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me. Hello, and Beth. Right. Thank <laughs> you for joining <laughs> us. No, I'm, I'm, you're very welcome. I'm just looking forward to some more accents from Paul. I know <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that that's it. That's as far as it goes. That that's my full repertoire right there. It doesn't go any further yeah, than that. It's, that's it's as a good as range it gets. of one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. So, um, Beth, we've got a few questions to to go through with you tonight and uh, find out a bit more about you and. Um, you know all the 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 huge range of stuff that you've worked on so huge I'm range gonna, it, huge it range. really is you know when you look at someone's like imdb or their you know credits list and just kind yeah. of keeps keep scrolling and you keep you know, scrolling like, there's loads loads yeah. and loads of stuff there i i have to ask though can i just ask before we start because i have to know this but beth chalmers are you the beth chalmers involved with mystic yes I yes <laughs> <laughs> what? You know Mystic. <laughs> I, I do. I know Mystic because I have two teenage daughters, right, who started watching it one summer. Actually, it might have been during COVID when they when they started watching it. And I'm like, guys, what is this? And they're like, shh. I'm like, what is it? I sat down, you know, I'd, and I instantly recognized it for a program about horses and handsome boys. That's kind of what I thought it was about. And and they love all that stuff, apparently. So which I never knew. So I learned something about my daughters that they they love that stuff. And well, it's uh, so much more than horses and handsome boys. Of, of course it is, because I started getting into the whole adventure of it as well. I mean, there was horse <laughs> thievery, there was duplicitousness, there was drama, there was there was people who looked like they were gonna die at any moment, and it was getting really tense. Yeah, so I, yeah. I we... did kind of um end up watching it as well. So it's uh, <laughs> oh, I'm it's thrilled. Fun. I'm thrilled. Yeah, yeah. We 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 blew up caves and we yeah, and we drowned. Oh, God, we had a horse uh, charging down the beach and <laughs> made this poor girl lie there as if she was being washed up. And, of course, because um, why would you not do that? And then, and then <laughs> afterwards, we were told that it was it was all a bit iffy that the horse got horse got quite close to her head. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> Oops. Oops. We were all a bit. We were all sort of crossing our fingers, going, "Well done." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can we just do that again darlings please yes uh, well, oh, no that's that's all right and, yeah because i suppose health and safety is somebody else's problem really isn't it oh. and you you wonder why they yeah. say don't work with children and animals but you know <laughs> i tell you it was quite, they were yeah children animals and covid they really yeah they really scuppered us but that's really what i did when i'm you know when in lockdown mm. just just was writing it we were show running it but from the other side of the world so every, yeah, morning, yeah. every morning you wake up to emails and you go, why? Why have you done this? Why have you, why have you changed those things? And why have you got <laughs> children wearing stripes next to each other? They look like a mice. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then every night you're you've got meetings until until very late. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it a lot of fun doing that though? It looks, it looks like it was probably that sort of production where you have a lot of fun, a lot of work, but a lot of fun. Yeah, we went out there once for series one, but we couldn't go out for series two or three. And um, mm. yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun because. Because it there was, we were completely immersed in it, mm. and in lockdown there wasn't anything else to be doing. So we were very, very lucky to have that, and we worked in a group of me and my writing partner, and we had a script editor, Jen, and um, yeah. the three of us, all day, every day, just just constantly at it doing. Yeah, as much we as were we, we were editing series one, mm. writing series two, and uh, story breaking series three, all at the same time. So wow. So, I mean, Amy and I were, my writing partner and I were mm. the whole time going, hey, has she met him yet? Or have they been there? <laughs> <laughs> and thank God for Jen, who was our you know, producer. Yeah, editor. Yeah. She did, just, she knew everything. everything did you have a, a Bible for it? Show yeah, it's a sort of Bible in the head. Yeah. In her head, it was extraordinary. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. I, I suppose as, the longer a show goes on, and and I imagine for like for the guys at Big Finish and stuff, and you know working on Doctor Who, trying to keep track of the kind of you know timelines of characters and all you know the way things go, and you know you know one of they end up with these great big thick you know Bibles to keep track of it all. Yeah. How how could you otherwise? You how know, could sort of, you? Because you see it sometimes when um 
you know, in a show, someone someone will say something, and then you know, the, the audience will be like, well, you know, four episodes ago, or you know, two series ago, they said they didn't eat cucumbers, or yeah. something, you know, and, and so you, you have to keep track of all of it. It must be, yeah, quite a quite a task really to do that. Yeah, it's very much for them to do, which is why um, when you said yeah. you said we're going to chat, I'm, I'm terrified that I'm going to, <laughs> because I have done a lot, quite a big span of things for mm, them. Yes. And I, I'm very engaged in it when I'm doing it, but it's very difficult to remember which which story with, with who and wh- where I was and what, yeah. land, mm. land, what planet I was on and yeah. In every sense and yeah so um i'll try and answer whatever yeah well don't don't yeah, feel we'll terrified. Go for it. I, yeah, um, yeah 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 uh, we haven't got any questions that relate to uh you know what planet did this story take no 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 we're, in, we're, we're not that intense on... that, yeah. that's a different podcast <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good. Good, I'm glad. Yeah. so um let's let's start off with uh for anyone who's listening or watching who doesn't know who you are beth why don't you, you tell us a little bit about you and your your background and all the things that you get up to well, I write and act and uh, and voice, and I've been doing cartoons and radio drama. I, I went to drama school. Mm. And, um, I won the Carlton Hobbs when I was there, which is which meant I was on the radio rep. So I did BBC Radio Rep, <laughs> and that uh, and that sort of set a really good radio bedrock. Mm. So all my radio stuff came from there. And when I was working on some BBC comedy. With Peter Davison, that's how I got into. Oh, into okay. Um, oh, well, okay. Uh, and yeah, so, so yeah, everything I do, bits of everything. Yeah, you you really do. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll um touch on all of that as, as we chat. So we spoke to uh, Miranda Rosen a little while ago, and she does some big finished stuff, as as you know. And she said that um it's all quite a bit like radio, didn't she, Paul? That uh, she did yeah, say that. Mm. You, you go in and do you know a small part and they they like you and they ask you back for more and you know like you said you you work with peter davison there and you know on, on radio and you know that that probably you know helped lead to big finish in a way so it's quite interesting this you, you know kind of little connections of, yeah and the connections and the stable of talent they they've got so when um when you met peter how, how did then the, the big finish stuff come about did he put you forward for something did you have to audition or it was an audition and I didn't get it. So he, uh, <laughs> I was doing, I was doing, um, I think called Rigor Mortis. Was it Rigor Mortis? Yeah, Rigor Mortis on Radio 4 with him. And, mm. um, and then, and then he just rang me out the blue once and said, are you in London? Uh, yes, I was in Leicester Square doing a voiceover. And he said, get yourself down to Spotlight because I want you to audition for this, this series called Graceless. And that's Laura Doddington and Kira Jensen, I think. Mm. And and I was at that that point I was doing famous five cartoon with Kira. So it was all <gasps> and um and then they uh and I ran down there and I auditioned and they went, Yeah, you, you might be a bit old. <laughs> no. <laughs> so they, I maybe they didn't say that with, oh. <laughs> politely. <laughs> but they really, they really um remembered and mm. got back to do some just some some dramas I did. I think the first one was Time Reef. Um, oh yes, I got that. Yeah. One. I, played, uh, yeah. I played a lady in a jar. <laughs> this, <laughs> well, this, I, I, I dream of genie. I think. <laughs> There's not many shows that you can <laughs> play. Say on, things like, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I played was, a lady in a jar. Yeah. That was my, yeah. my pinnacle of my career when I sat in that jar on the mantelpiece and played the lady who was sat within it. That's 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 what that's I did. It, yeah. It yeah, yeah. You do think oh, I didn't? I, I didn't. We didn't do that mm. drama school. A drama school they didn't do women involved i think they should oh, they, they yeah. should totally That's do it, that they should build like that a, into the curriculum it sh- yeah it should be a module that they, mm. they cover you know so with your big finish stuff you you sort of started with quite kind of smaller roles didn't you and then you've you kind of really built your way up through it haven't you to to having your own recurring character so ha- how's that felt for you what's the process of it all been like it felt quite quick and quite easy sounds rude I just sailed in but I <laughs> and I think the second thing I did I had to play lots of different characters and, mm. and I was playing multi multi voice characters a lot and um and then I was also boxing at the time so I was training for a fight okay and I was and I was always I was uh, quite serious about it yeah otherwise I would get hurt um so yeah. I uh yeah so I was training very hard for this fight and um and then uh whilst I was doing my big finish so then they this character of Rain Creevy came up and she was supposed to be 
a high society girl and mm. also a bit of a, an ass kicker. And they went, <laughs> and actually Ken Bentley and David Richardson took me out for wine and said, there really isn't any point in auditioning. <laughs> <But> it's, <laughs> it's yours, right? <laughs> is it really do it? I thought, yeah, all right. Thanks yeah. very much. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> yeah, which is a tab. So yeah, for for an actor, it, it must be quite nice to, you know, when you get in somewhere and then you do a little bit more and a little bit more and it gets bigger and it's bigger. And, it, you know, it's it's kind of a dream in some ways, I guess, isn't it? To have, well, you know, stable work as well. But, you know, to, to make that impression with some, with a, you know, with a company and to keep getting asked back. It's absolutely brilliant and incredibly rare, I think. Mm. To have it. And... Yeah, David Richardson has just sort of been backing me the whole mm. way and always thinks of me for for stuff. And they ring me. I've done a lot of reading in. So I, I try and curry favour. So whenever somebody can't, <laughs> they can't show up, um, you know, and, and all the other actors are there and they need yeah. some food in that part for them to react to, I'll turn up in a kind of selfless and humble way. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yeah. No then, I'll, I'll do that no, for you. Yeah. Yeah. Just because I am a very good person. <laughs> you just, just happen to be in the area. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You haven't so, been knocking um, on the door for an hour. <laughs> yeah, camping outside. Don't, yeah. don't, don't mind it's that cool. sleeping bag. It's nothing to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, pots uh, of breakfast. <laughs> it is really good to have, actually. And they've been yeah. really good. So you do, even though you, you can feel safe-ish, but you're mm. always stop any moment and mm. it was lucky to go straight from rain into Vecklen and Vecklen's been coming back so mm. I got to work with Hat. yeah that's I was going to ask you wow if you did, yeah, yeah that's amazing you, I, I figured you did because of you know the war doctor stuff so how, how was that it was it was fantastic for the first series he was down the line he was in um Norwich somewhere he was in Norfolk mm. and you could tell that we were having a really good laugh and he really wanted to come and join in and oh. he, he rang David and said, can I come down in yeah. London for the next lot? Fantastic. He was really fun. Really. And I just, and I'm really on it as well. You know, mm. first thing, his voice is so recognisable that yeah. when you have earphones on and he's in the next door studio, just the, the coming through your cans and you think. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, what and was that, that kind of a shiver up the spine sort of moment? You know, was yeah. It? yeah. And he's just, oh, he was just a fantastic actor, clearly. And mm. really fun, really, and then so just a fantastic guy. Yeah, yeah. that's nice to hear because yeah. he he's one of those actors that you always well I always sort of think is quite serious. You know, it's quite a lot of dramatic work, and mm. you know how sometimes uh, an on screen uh, you know persona can kind of bleed into what you perceive as someone. So you know to hear that you know that he's good fun and not that there's any reason to think he wouldn't be. But that, you know, he was obviously enjoying doing the recordings and stuff is, is really nice to hear. And, you know, that Absolutely. I love it when someone's got the passion for what they're doing and, and they're really into it like that. Yeah. Well, the good so. thing about all the big Finnish things is, is it rattles along. Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> I think he he had enough of sitting in his trailer for five hours and coming mm. out from nine. So just thought, because if you want to do the actual acting, or do some actual acting, and if you've got to wait five hours for it, it's yeah. just... And yeah, I suppose could take the sting out of it a little bit, couldn't mm. it? I guess. Well, I, I suppose mm. it, it's like that on a lot of modern stuff, particularly if it's effects heavy, because you know you're you're setting up for you know an explosion or whatever. Or oh no, technics, and, Jeff. Yeah, and and you know you might only end up doing a, a tiny little mm. bit of yeah. you know running from point A to point B, and then you're going to sit and wait for four hours again, and and then do another little bit of running or deliver a line or something. So yeah, I I can see the appeal to you know, doing the, the stuff like Big Finish and oh, yeah. audio books, because quite a lot of, you know, big names and do them as well yeah. now, don't they? And it must be nice to, you know, we talked to Lauren Cornelius, didn't we, Paul? And we said, you know, do you roll up in your sweatpants and your, you know, your hoodie? <laughs> you know, just go in and do it. But it's it's quite nice, I think, like you're saying, Beth, just be able to go in and, and act and, and do it, particularly with other people around you. And there's no, you yeah. know, nothing holding you back from the kind of the, the core part of, of the art there that you love doing. Yeah. And the variety is so great. The big mm. So, I mean, you know, you can do the the emotional stuff and the quiet stuff, but I did have done something recently. I'm scared of saying things because I don't know whether things are always top secret. Yeah. And I don't e know that. Everyone's really secretive. <laughs> and we and we try and we try to get We try to front, bleed it out of them, but yeah. they won't. Oh, fight, will they? I'm yeah. the first person who's just going to glump through it. <laughs> we'll, we'll just beep it out. We'll just, you know, so just... Yeah. yeah <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll send it to Nick Briggs for for, uh, for approval. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> and I recorded something recently. Oh, like, that's what I was saying. And, yeah. And, um, I hadn't done, I've, I've worked with the Paternoster gang. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. 
and they've got a different style it's 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 uh it's yeah. very, it's fun it's out there it's um it's extreme it's you can you can be as ridiculous as you like oh my <laughs> goodness <laughs> i'm we, starting to get terrified already <laughs> oh, we just went for it and I, this is this is the most fun i've had acting in a long oh, time oh wow <laughs> brilliant really pushing it to, you've got nothing yeah. left in the studio thinking. yeah yeah, that, that, that's what you want though isn't it like you're saying you, you just you just want to you know we, we know it's a job we know everyone's got to work and you've got to earn money from it and you've got to be good at what you do and everything else but you know if you can't have a bit of fun during the day while you're doing it then what's that point yeah exactly, right? exactly. but it is it is so much fun that that's why mm. i got the big finish because if it's just acting they always say that acting's a bit like an abusive relationship where you just <laughs> where you oh well, but unless you're really successful yeah. otherwise you 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 think to yourself when it all goes mm. wrong rejection you can't get the part you think oh i'm gonna give up i'm gonna give up and all you yes. think one little part one yeah. little show of faith from from the world of acting and you think oh i, I live for this i love it it's amazing yeah. and then yeah, it's yeah. quiet again it's just like this push pull of just, yeah. how, how, yeah. do, how do you get the sort of um, resilience or how do you develop the resilience you think to kind of push through that so it must be i know well we know there are a lot of one you know actors out there who, who, who want to break into acting and finding it quite tough if it's constant rejection after rejection it might not be about them so how, how, you know, what techniques have you employed to try and help you get through this? What sort of mindset do you think? I just cry a lot, but behind closed yeah. doors. <laughs> <There's the inspiring laughs> you have to. Just flood it out of the system. And then, it's, and then the next this day is, is another day. The so best you, method. You, have to, you do have to spin a lot of plates. And the fact mm. is, because I've got my voiceovers and, and that's just, that's voiceovers on whole messages and mm. adverts and also cartoons. And then I've got my writing. So yeah. I can always be creating something. I'm always coming up with a new thing. Mm. So if everything's gone, you've got those rejections, you can you can go in another direction that is still in the creative industry. So you're still, yeah. so you still feel like you're being mm. in that world. Um, and we, we talked a little bit about this with someone recently that, you know, I know a few actors and, and presenters and, you know, they, they cross over and do a bit of both. And I think that's quite a good way to make yourself more employable mm. and to give you more options like you stay just visible have, stay current so to, you yeah. know so you can write and if if the voiceover work is quiet you, you maybe you've got some acting that you can fall upon and you know so like for me you know i can film and i can edit and you know do all of that so i can always kind of keep myself busy with things. and you so do think, podcasts jeff well i do podcasts you know yeah and everybody's on everybody's screens on everybody's lips you know yeah like, yeah bit of this bit of that in it yeah a little bit woo a little bit wee yeah um and you know well it's a fast show for anyone who doesn't know my i know i used to love it Un uncanny yeah, uh impression it was amazing it's amazing yeah, like, it's like the... paul whitehouse just walked straight into your room there jeff <laughs> but the more you know areas that you can cover the, mm. you know the better and it keeps you busy doesn't it yeah yeah Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, half it is just distracting yourself from the rejection, and the, and the other, <laughs> other, other, other half is something else you enjoy. Yeah, yeah. The that's the their problem. If they didn't want me, I don't care oh, yeah. anymore. Well, it yes. is often, and and don't you think that when you do get rejected for a part, quite often it, it will come down to something as silly as like your eye colour, or you know, you, you were two inches too short for the actor opposite you, or you, it's that sort of thing. It's not necessarily that you know you weren't you know right good enough for it it's it's any number of little things that are not necessarily yeah. you as as a person as an actor and i think if you can you know kind of once you kind of learn how to deal with that i think it, it the rejection is always difficult isn't it but it yeah. does make it slightly easier it does but there's also powerlessness to that so mm. I, I mean even though it's, it's very rarely because you're not good enough which sounds delusional mm. But I think from doing from casting, because we do a lot of casting on Mystic. Mm. Yes. Yeah. They're all, we've never decided against someone because their acting isn't good enough. Mm. We've decided yeah. because when they walked in, we thought, oh, that's the character we see. We, that, yeah. That's, I, I just instantly. Yeah, and he's mm. got, he's got the humor and the humor is the right kind of humor for the character. Mm. And even the others were good at comedy and they were good actors. Mm. And they were the right height and color. But for some reason, it was just, an, it was just that, an you, energy. Sort of, you kind of know don't you, you yeah know. and and also we all we, we also you've got to be fighting with and lots of people watching all the tapes mm. and someone's going i love this i hate that and some people we completely overlook until one person says have you seen the uh the red-headed girl on the left of the and we yeah. all watch and go how do we miss that first time yeah mm. yeah yeah, yeah. It, there's a certain 
luck and randomness to it, which at times is it can make you feel better, and other times makes you feel utterly powerless. So you think mm. I could be amazing and perfect, and but then you know, you know I just, it's just it's part of the industry, isn't it? Yeah. You know that that's the job. You've I, got to be able to do that. Deal I just it. watched um, Tom Cruise getting an award at something producer thing the other day, and he, and he was talking about making your own luck. You know, and and the, you have to, Jeff. You yeah, have to make the, your own there luck is, in this There world. is a luck element, like you know, Beth. You you met Peter there on a job, and that led to more. Mm. But you know, the way you got yourself in there, and you know, you, you have to kind of you have to take the things, initiative. Yeah, and yeah. and once you kind of get a get your foot in the door, it, it can lead to more. But yeah, you can't kind of you can you lead to, to more doors. Yeah, you have to pursue it though and, and keep going. <laughs> and it, it, some people really kick the doors down, don't they? Mm. I mean, yes. it's all well and good for Tom Cruise to say, make your own luck. Yeah, I was going to say, like, yeah, it, it, <laughs> know, true. it worked out all right for him, didn't it? You know? yeah. <laughs> um, but the, who's the boy, Barry? Oh, who's the boy that just won the Oscars? The Irish boy. If, if, oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Barry Keoghan. He was in yeah. um, Eternals, yeah. wasn't he? And. Um, with the, ba- the Batman film as well. And yeah, but Banshee's of Insulin. Yeah. You can tell I watch the Oscars from my blank stare yeah. to the screen. <laughs> like, what, are they, what are they talking about now? No idea. No, I just look at um bits that come up on, on Facebook when people yeah. like this person. I can't do award ceremonies. They upset me because I'm not there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just think, yeah. oh, never mind. There, there, there is there is a way to deal with that, which I found actually, because um, you know, in, in my industry, having not won many awards, I've won a few, but none recently. Now I'm a judge. You yeah. see, so, so yeah. That, what are you judging? Like it. I'm judging. I'm a judge. I judge things. Just think, what, what, who, what are you? What, who, and who, and how? <laughs> I can't just, possibly tell you. Well, okay. he, just, he goes around town going, "You're judged." <laughs> You're judged. Judge. <laughs> I'm judging here. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I do. Yeah, I just I'm just a judge of people being judgmental. That's yeah. that. That's what it is. Yeah. No, but it's good. It's, it's a good. It's a good treat. You should try it. You know, that yeah. kind of keeps you relevant and stops you um, being noticed for not winning any any yeah. awards. That's that's why I started a film festival. I didn't there you go. Awards, exactly. So. <laughs> there you go. You can hand the awards out. Yeah. And you can make yeah. a, a nice pithy comment yeah. and everything else. Yeah. But you know, it's, and then you know, I can get one made. You know, I can get a pity one made to take home. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I award myself. <laughs> Oh dear. Anyway, coming back on topic because we are we are talking about Doctor yes. Who and, and, and various other things. And, and so, you, yes, yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, Beth, w- would you call yourself a Doctor Who fan? Have you did you used to watch it before you were in Big Finish, or you know, do you watch it now? There's, there's I, no judging, by the way. No yeah. judging. We're not judging. Now. I, I when I was young, I watched it with Tom Baker. Absolutely. Oh, did you? Mm. And I did watch it absolutely. And now I listen to it. Mm. A different world to the to the. To the TV, so now, actually, my boyfriend's uh, daughter Beth, who's also called Beth, is, very, <laughs> um, uh, is is a big Doctor Who fan, and so I watch it with her sometimes. Mm. But I'm I'm not very when you, when you dip in and dip out of things like that, it, it's quite confusing. Yes, <laughs> yes. can be. Yeah. The same yeah. with the Finnish world. You think, oh, yeah. what? <laughs> so I think I think because I feel like I need to do it completely, mm. not worry about it too much. Yeah, I get lost. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I know that feeling. It, it, mm. it is like that. We, we've talked about big finish like that, haven't we, Paul? But There's it's, so it's much of it, so Jeff. Much. Yeah, and it's and it's all so good. But like I saw someone on Twitter the other day say, well, you know, what should I start with? <laughs> you know, people were like, well, just pick one up. Just, just pick a doctor. It's yeah, pretty or, much, you isn't know, it? <laughs> and, and pick one of their stories because the chances are it's it's going to be a cracker, and and you'll enjoy mm. it. And because yeah. your your work with Vel Vecklin has has gone from like the war doctor into doom coalition and and you know um uh like the, the gallifrey series and stuff so it's it's really turned into a big part for you isn't it and kind of that journey is that, that character arc has spread across you know a huge number of s- series isn't it yeah and i didn't see that coming i think when really? i first i was uh, i was working with them um, oh, i've gone completely black jacqueline 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 rayner jacqueline jack ja- rayner no ja- um, as in, as in Pierce, Jacqueline Pierce. Oh, Jacqueline Pierce, as in Serverland, Blake Seven. Sorry, I just yes. um, and and uh, and so because she's she was very um, mm. diverse, and I just thought, well, I'll, I'm your second in command, so I'm going to be yeah. a bit like you. So I just thought, <laughs> well, it was only one episode, and then it character kept coming back and and having more of a personality because she was quite, you know, she was mm. unemotional. 
and uh but then the as the more scripts came out they became drier and funnier and they get John mm. Dory in there and there's going to be jokes so yeah. they're like yeah so so she, she she changed a little bit to start with she was absolutely straight down the line you know we're going to fight this and do that and I've got no sense of humour whatsoever yeah. and now she's yeah. her eyes. <laughs> yeah. I think Susan's War was where she felt like a bit of a um, mm. kind of dug around in her character a bit more and is it is it nice to you know like you said you didn't kind of expect all that to happen and is it you know for for you as an actress to you know have had your skill recognized like that and you know the the character to be responded to such that they've they've developed it it must be really must be quite cool yeah yeah i think so because they could have easily just just gone I think that character, we don't need that yeah. character. <laughs> She's died off screen, you know. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, they can't room to do that. So it's it's very mm. flattering that they didn't. Um, but sometimes I like to know it's going to have a longevity because I, I'll uh, maybe paint it with more watercolour mm. because I feel like if you, if you know you've got a long run to go, you can just show little bits. Yeah. But I think yeah, I just, yeah. I, mm. I kind of went in quite hard on the first episode. And I'd like to have backed off a little bit, maybe. I don't know. Mm. I don't well, know. the thing is with with who as well is even if the character reaches their end, there's all sorts of avenues for stories that haven't been heard before and resurrections and timey wimey stuff, you know. So you you know, chances are you're not really gonna be dead anyway, you know, to, to mm. <laughs> you know, to come and you know, develop it all a bit more. Um, so you've worked with all of the doctors that do Big Finish, I think, haven't you? Is that right? I have. Uh, I've not worked with, I mean, I know Tim Trelaw Voice is one of the doctors. Mm. Yes. I haven't worked with him, even though I was on the radio wet with him when I won the Carlton Hall. Oh, right. Hey. So I've known him for a very long time. Um, but uh, yeah, um, John Hurt and Jonathan Carley and Christopher Eccleston and David Tennant and... Tom yeah. and Colin and Silv and Peter, Peter and Paul. Yeah. In my in my um mental checklist of big finished doctors, that's all of them, I think. Is it? Oh, well, I, I think it is, Chef. Yeah, yeah, you're dead right there, mate. I think do know right. I, haven't, I haven't done much with Peter. And because he's um he's basically he, he's always uh, he complains to David and says, oh, I brought her in. Why is she <laughs> Where, where's my royalties? <laughs> where's yeah. my my agent? Where's my cut? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, so what, what's it like working with with all of them and and you know particularly Tom as you know if you kind of grew up watching him is is it quite oh yeah do, do you get a bit mm. like for, for Paul or I yeah a bit starstruck we were, I, I would yeah. I, I wouldn't know what to say I just we, sent a jelly yeah. gibberish and Tom about, oh, the ability Tom, to talk <laughs> you know so do you go in and you're like oh hi you know be really cool about it or and inside you he's like ah I was intimidated I think meeting Tom because he's quite a huge character. Mm, mm. But you can't, there's no room to be nervous because he's he'll do the talking. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. there's, there's and you do awkward, the listening. <laughs> awkward silences or anything. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and he's he's fun and entertaining and also, again, really on it. Yeah. Um, mm. So, yeah, he's quite safe. I think I, John Hurt, again, but very quickly put me up my ease. Um, and Paul as well. Paul, because of with now and I, I was a bit like... <gasps> um, but then he's a big boxing fan. So, and I was... Boxing when I first met him, so right. we just we talked about really. That's good. You've done, yeah, you've done quite a few with him, haven't you? With with his yeah. doctor, yeah. yeah. Uh, we we talked to Colin uh, a little while ago, and uh, he was brilliant, wasn't he, Paul? He was so kind of he's really sharp as well, isn't he? And, and yeah, really witted, and uh, yeah. Yeah, he, he he was a lot of fun. Yeah, he's yeah, so, he's on fire. Yeah. How how often do you go in to record with them? Because some some people just do like one session a year or every couple of months, or you must be in there. Quite a bit, I guess. I'm in there or, quite a lot. And yeah. In fact, uh, well, this year I was away doing Mystic, and they would ring sometimes, and I'd say, "I, I just can't, I can't do it." And then, oh, he says, "I'm the host." Oh, Paul's disappeared. <laughs> uh, we are still recording. He'll come back in a minute. That sometimes All right, happens. Then. Uh, so I've yeah, got power. Just... it's like it's like I could have booted the, him out. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um. Yeah. Sorry. Uh. Yeah. No, I'm in there quite a lot. In fact, uh, last year I had a run where I was in. Uh, t twice one week and once the next about, about wow. six, six times I think I was sort of popping in on different things right that's, that's um, great isn't it for, you know for, for an actor you know to have that kind of that regular stuff and do they have um a set studio that you go to or was it different ones 
Well, it used to be Moat Studios in Labrook Grove, yeah. and that was that was where the lunches everyone banged on about. Uh, yes, oh, so we, yeah. we heard about the infamous lunch. They don't do them anymore. No, you know, no that is, honestly, Beth, that is a that is a myth that has it's been a shocker. demolished. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I've been let down yeah. for my life now. Um, it's not good. <laughs> it was really. It sounds like something we've we all gone. Oh, how, what a lovely lunch. Mm. It, was, it, it really was extraordinary. Yes, yeah, that's, that's what we'd heard, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, how? How is this happening? So, um, yeah, it was great. Uh, but now, that was when we were in Labbert Grove, mm. in, which was Toby. And now we're in the Sound House in Acton, North Acton. Nacton. 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 Um, even though I'm there a lot, I still, I still have to <laughs> check it, which stop to get off at to think... <laughs> Yeah, so we're out there, and uh, and it's kind of cool. It's a very cool mm. place. You, you turn up, and and there's jobs going on all all around it. So there's four different studios, or actually, there's wow. probably much more than that. But so there's a cast doing an English language tape that you sort of know because you've done a cartoon with one of them. And then there's another cast. We were in there recently, and they were doing gaslighting with or gaslight with Johnny Vegas was directing it. Oh, and, okay. And Greg, yeah. Wise, no, not Greg Wise. Oh, James Purefoy. Okay. Rudely, I can't remember the mm. woman who was in it, who was equally fabulous. But um, so you got those sort of dramas, and you've got and yeah, and everyone always comes up and says, "Oh, oh you're doing Big Finish, are you? Are you how, <laughs> who's the director?" And you think they're, they're get doing off, that. They're get, doing off, that. get off, that's mine. That is, they, yeah. they want you to be there, Peter, and get and get you in. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in, yeah. They, they, they sort of everybody wants to get into a big finish I think. yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah they do look like a lot of fun don't they jeff eh? yeah it, it would be you, yeah. you'd, you'd be good for a voice for it Paul well i think we just do yeah. we just hand out the tea you know i don't yeah. mind that we'll just, yeah. we'll just just do the I'll tea breaks what. and go around with the mop mind, mind your feet mate mind your feet i know Maybe. you're recording but i've got to mop that booth <laughs> ain't i i just do what i'm paid for mate i've got to mop the booth so you carry on don't you mind me do you reckon we could bring back the legendary lunches between us I don't, think we, I don't think our budget will stretch that, Jeff. Mm, I'll make a pretty good cheese sandwich. But, oh, well, there you go. Uh, <laughs> cheese, you do the cheese, I'll do the but egg. I'm sure that will be the standard that everyone was used to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can try it. Let's see how it goes. I'll try it. Yeah. Try. It's worth <laughs> trying. Be persistent. That's what you got to be. We established that earlier on in the podcast. Yes. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes. So, but let's go back to um, the, the early days of your career. So how did your love of acting develop? You mentioned the... the, the school the degree that you went to so you know what kind of put you on that path and you know how did it all grow and develop from there I don't really know which is a terrible <laughs> answer. I, I know when I was growing up I, mm. I I was I was very into horses and my my dad was a jockey we, we had racing stables and stuff and it was all very entitled um, um but uh, <laughs> whatever, whatever um but uh um and that was going to be what I was going to do I think mm. It's retiring looking at horses mm. and dangerous. And so I just thought, oh, maybe I'll maybe I'll act instead. So yeah. it, it'd always been there. It had just when I was very little, played Will Scott mm. play and um and I loved it. And then just and then I tried to play Tallulah in the school play in the Bugs Malone. Oh, Malone. Bugs Malone. Yeah. I didn't get it. And I'm still a little bit sore about it. <laughs> so, you, you, so you're not the sort of person who carries a grudge for long then, right? Yeah. <laughs> Only when I've been robbed. <laughs> um, yeah, I think all the way through school, I just really wanted to do it, and I really, yeah. Wanted it. and um, yeah, and then I went to university because I thought I have to have a backup degree. Mm. Um, although people, the really brave people, the really cool people, go, I don't have a backup. Yeah, I just, mm. I just, I no just, B plan. No, and I was absolutely. You know, what, what did you do at uni? I did education so I could be a teacher because I okay. Um, See that that's quite interesting because I um I went to the local college to do a talk recently with the film students, and they were asking should we go to uni and and get a degree, and this, the teachers were sitting there and I went no probably not, and because I went to uni did my film degree, <laughs> was it worth it probably not because you I hated it didn't you? And my you tutor was uh, tutor yeah he was a whole we've, we've had this story a few we've, times we've had this story sorry everyone oh, okay but no no I I think that. There's some jobs like acting that you don't necessarily need to do that kind of, mm. you know, uh, you know, 
official path if you, you do you know what i mean by like going into education or something get get out there get experience go make a film get acting go write something and and mm. so I, I said to the teachers is it all right if i tell them don't go to uni and <laughs> they were like yeah yeah that, that's fine if that's what you think and i said for this kind of stuff yeah i think so yeah um, i think it's immersing yourself in the world of it so mm. i went to cambridge and that meant that i did footlights I did. Um, oh yes, yeah, yeah. The first yeah, thing I did was, was a Freshers play, and Sasha Baron Cohen was playing um, mm. um, Cyrano de Bergerac, and then I did I did loads of plays. I did um, Round Around the Garden with uh, Olivia Colman, wow. and, and then we went to Edinburgh with her and, and with my mm. writer as well. So I did loads and loads of stuff, and that was what made it, and also made some connections. But that's well, that's that's really it. You made. get connections, don't you, and and it build up that CV, yeah. So that made a difference. And then I went to drama school. And if someone said to me, should you go to drama school? I'd go, mm. I mean, I did more plays at university than I did at drama school. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't think about it too much at drama school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At drama school. I just, I, I, university for me was great because I, I got to do all the, I got to, it, it kept it as fun. The acting mm. was fun and free and you could do stuff and you could play with it. And nobody was judging every single thing you did and taking yes. all the fun. Yeah. Um, that, that, that can happen isn't it when, when you make a course out of something creative like that it can suck all the joy from yeah, it definitely. if it's not yeah. if it's not done i'm sure there's a lot of courses where that doesn't happen and they actually inspire and motivate people but i'm sure there's a lot that actually just make it standard kind of you know soulless stuff which is which is not great the whole thing about creating is it releases you doesn't it it, mm. it allows you to express yourself and you know find your voice and find out who you are and just try lots of different yeah. ideas and expressions and and show something to the world that maybe they've never seen before they yeah. wouldn't and if they have they wouldn't have seen it from your experience from your ex perspective and that's something universities and colleges can't teach you maybe they can show you how other people have done it and maybe make you avoid making silly mistakes possibly but from my point of view as soon as you try to install a set of rules on something creative you take something away from it it, it sucks the fun out of it just yeah. getting yeah. that one out there no you but you're right <laughs> the yeah. platform share yeah. that soapbox oh yes <laughs> no, you're right it can take the magic out of it and i think yeah. that only when you get stuck if you're doing a part and you go i don't know mm. what to do, then maybe you've got some tools yeah but but yeah the, uh, hopefully you don't need that hopefully you've just read it and there's instinct you need to have instinct yes i think that you've got to have something in you mm -hmm. to better do it in in the first place you know uh in voiceovers or acting or you know good eye for a shot you know whatever it might be so yeah. how did you get your your first agent beth what was that uh journey like for you that was it very conventional i went to <laughs> drama school at the end of drama school oh, okay uh, there's a showcase and um so that that would be a plus of going somewhere like that wouldn't it yeah, they can introduce you to that sort of thing. Yeah. Mm. Drama school gave me the showcase, which gave me an agent, and it gave me the opportunity to be in the Carlton Hobbs, which mm. when I won that, I got the contract. So these are things I wouldn't have done without drama school. Yeah. Even though I think people can do that, they can do the Carlton Hobbs another way now because because they've realised it's it's elite to only the drama school graduates can do mm. it. Um. So he, uh, yeah, it gave me that. I mean, probably gave me lots of things. I feel maybe I feel a bit guilty that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now we think about it drama school did Probably, quite a fair a bit <laughs> got loads, a lot of people got loads mm. of it loads from it and maybe because i've been to university before i've done four years and i've done loads of mm. stuff. It, it, it was the wrong order maybe i don't know well maybe it's all cumulative you know the university yeah. the drama school plus your your earlier experiences you know it's all kind of gathering momentum isn't it with with, with you and you know giving you some idea of, of what you love i guess mm. Yeah, absolutely. And it also makes you a lot older when you limp onto the scene. <laughs> there is that, yes. But the wiser, more experienced, I would say. Well, it's, it's, you know, character work then, isn't it? You know, yeah. Character actor. There you yeah, go. Not, that's not, why not, that's not. exactly what it is. I yeah, never yeah. wanted to play Juliet, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what was your first big credit then, Beth? What was your first big break? God. Um, you started land that one in there just to turn that cannonball straight in. I know, so when you say big break, it makes me sound like I'm... <laughs> catapulted to yes. like, when I played Laird at the old Vic years ago I said you I can't even watch, watch, watch um, award ceremonies because I'm not there <laughs> just maybe the big break is, is <laughs> what, what was the first, oh, okay go on Jeff yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, the first uh, job first professional you know job that you got and the first time that you kind of got a bit of money where you thought bloody hell you know this this is working <laughs> you know well actually I was I suppose I was very lucky from university mm. Before drama school, I got rung up by a voiceover agent 
and got a voiceover agent from from Mar from the Footlight Show. Right. And then got then that was the first time I got paid for stuff. And thought, oh. and and as I realised two Money. years later, my, only realised two years later, <laughs> my dad said. Yeah. No, no, you have to pay tax. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand. So, yeah. I, joy. I haven't got anything left. <laughs> yeah, but how? So, uh, I, uh, Welcome to the world. Yeah. <laughs> and then when I left, and then when I left, uh, oh, that's when I left drama school, mm. I auditioned for a play at Chichester Festival Theatre, and I got that oh. at the same time as getting the Carlton Hobbs. Yeah, <laughs> that's... <laughs> Jeff's Definitely. Jeff's neck of the wood, that Chichester yeah, Theatre. Yeah, I live in Horsham, and um, yeah, I did some filming at Chichester uh, Festival mm -hmm. Theatre a couple of times last year. And weirdly enough, we we got there for a show, and uh, people who've listened to the podcast before will know this. And I I, I knew what the um, show was called, but I didn't know who was in it. And we got there, and I discovered that the main actor was the guy who played the baddie in the recent series of Doctor Who. And I said to Sam, Sam Sproul, and uh, I said to the guys I was with, oh, my God, you're not going to believe who. who and then he went there. all fan, fanboys. Yeah. And, like, and I was like, I, I, need, I need to be really cool now. And uh, <laughs> we were live editing the show and I was setting the stuff up in a little room at the back. And, and I looked up and, and Sam was standing at the door and I was like, oh, hello. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I text Paul, you're not going to believe who's here. And I thought, I I'm going to have to go and say, you know, I thought you were excellent in, in the show. but it, And I managed to get the chance to and we got chatting and I happened to mention the podcast. I'm he, texting him, get him on the podcast. He, yeah, Paul's going, do it, do it. And he said, oh, well, you know, I'll come on for a chat if you'd like. And I said, oh, yeah, it'd be brilliant. And, you know, he was great, but it was just a total fluke. But, um, yeah, right. just see it as, as great space. The, you the make stage, your own luck, Jeff. Well, the, yeah. yeah, that's it. You know, I, I, I was sitting there thinking, if, if I don't say something, I'll, mm. I'll regret it, you know, yeah. even if it's just to say, you know, you were brilliant. I wasn't kind of thinking, well, I must get him on the podcast, but it's just a... I was Tell thinking him. that. Well, you yeah. were. My, my phone kept going. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> but yeah, it's great down there. It's, it's a really good yeah. theatre. Yeah. I loved it. But even though I, because I, when I got that first mm. in the, God, what was it? What was it? It was a thing, play with Greta, Scotchy, Scotchy, Suchy, Suchy. Oh, Greta, yeah, Greta. yeah. Um, and it was uh, Noel Coward, Easy Virtue, it was called. Oh. Um, oh, yeah. They made a film of that, didn't they? I know that one. Jessica Biel. I know of it. Yeah. But, mm. yeah. yeah. And it was directed by Mariah Aitken, and um, and I got that, but then I got the, and I had to choose between that, so I chose the radio rep mm. that would, you know, breed more, and uh, yeah, yeah. and then got another chance to go to Chichester, and I did um, I did, <laughs> I did, I did Tom Stoppard, Arcadia. Ooh, oh, yeah. So I did get to go there in the end, and that was quite. That's probably. A good th a theatre one, which I thought felt mm. well, that that was a good play and a good yeah. play Um I mean, I did Midsummer Murders, and that that was was joyful for me because yeah. my my best friend uh, plays Cully Barnaby in um uh, one of my best. Sorry, in case Amy's Amy. And but um but yes, Laura plays uh, Cully Barnaby mm. in. Murders. and I got to play a part in her final episode oh, that's great. and I got to be murdered oh brilliant yes I, got, I, I had I was betrayed my love I wanted to make this man marry me and so I blackmailed him and then he yeah. stabbed me through the heart with a massive great big silver sword and I was found hanging off the wooden paneling oh excellent <laughs> quality death right there yeah, I think that's, it, that's pretty good surely for uh, for every actor getting a good on-screen death is on the bucket mm. list you know. Yes, I got to lie in the morgue as well. <gasps> Bonus. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> with, the, with the sheet over you for a while. I'm not trying to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't actually don't, breathe don't, there, guys. Don't, don't blink, leave me don't here. Blink, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, out of all the d different stuff that you've done and that you do, what is your favourite medium? Do you like being on screen Ooh, or in the booth or on stage? It's kind of an impossible to answer, really. It, I, I feel lucky that I get involved in and love each thing I do when I mm. do mm. but I maybe because I do less television acting and that for me it was just on films it was just joyful and mm. I really enjoy it but um it hasn't been sated that joy so maybe that it's not that I enjoy it more is I haven't had a chance to so do. there's more you want to do in that yeah, area so yeah there. yeah I, I sort of do so so I think acting tv acting and actually I'd like to do some more theatre as well but mm. I also love 
oh, the joy of it. Because, you know, when you do big finish, you just, it's different stories all the time. You're yeah. never bored. You never, ever yeah. get bored. Mm. Yeah, that's one of the things with, with Who, isn't it? You know, it's it's different every time. But, you know, one week you're ahead in the jar, the next week you're an alien. Exactly. You know? exactly. <laughs> there you go. I think, be careful what, what I wish for, really, when I say um, maybe more TV acting. Because, anyway, you know, according to John Hurt, I spend most of my time sitting in a trailer. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, maybe. There is that. Yeah, I was, I was yeah. watching. Um, I was watching the behind the scenes. I think it was a Doctor Who thing. Oh yes, it was uh, an interview with Graham Harper on the Collection box set, and he was saying that you know in the old days they try and get like as much of a, a twenty-five minute episode done on multi camera in a day, or I say a day. It's like a four-hour recording session in the evening. Whereas now it's like you're you're filming literally twelve to eighteen hours a day for about three or four minutes yeah. of footage. So yeah. you can imagine how much kind of waiting around there must be on on something like that. It's crazy, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. But you know, that's time to learn your lines. That's the way I look at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Use that time productively. Yeah. Yeah. Time to get nervous. Well it's time to wind yourself up into a complete to the yes. oh, I've been waiting for three days to do these two lines. Yeah. <laughs> and then they say, and yeah. they say, we're rescheduling you two tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can't do it tonight. Yeah. Be back tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> so we don't not going to do a close up on you because we don't need to. It's just mainly about if it, oh. back of the head. You know? <laughs> yeah. But I wash my face and everything. I've got someone my else's body. reaction. Yeah. Oh dear. Yeah. So Beth, tell us uh what was it like being Bellatrix Lestrange? <gasps> it was very cool. I mean, I you know, it's 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 the video game Bellatrix. Mm, yeah. <laughs> um it's uh it was extraordinary actually because i mean she's from helena bottom carter's from winchester which is where i'm from right and i think that slightly helps and i also did a thing on the today show mm. where i had to the film she was planet of the apes with mark Wahlberg. they did a oh, yes they got me in to do her so i've done a bit of trying to not really imitate her i sort of just do what i would do if i was doing the same mm. part and i like the fact that she when she's doing bellatrix she she does she does this and then she does that and she just she just completely did the yeah, gymnastics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It means you can't really get it wrong as long as you are burying it. So yeah. I would listen to the sort of things she'd do and then I think get some new lines and think and I could just pick what I thought would work better. And it, it, there was lots of fun because she's she goes for it as well. She mm -hmm. really goes for it. So yeah, it's a great yeah. character, yeah. Um and I didn't do it wasn't full mocap, but I had uh mm. So just on my face and and, and oh wow well, you got to wear the, the, the little dots and things yeah but just 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 yeah. a little facial bit but, um and yeah. Uh, so yeah so they had to see all how my face moved as her brilliant um, that's pretty cool yeah, yeah. Have you... oh sorry Paul, what were you gonna say i was i was just gonna ask beth if, if uh, have, have you done more video games is is, is, is you've done yeah, a few what, of those what, what's it like doing them because you know paul we play stuff don't we and you know there's there's yeah. so many alternate lines for every yeah scene that's and, true you know, yes he, he's taken the yeah. mic out of me but he'll be up to no no no, no i'm not honestly <laughs> no I'm, I'm playing a big big old game at the moment which has taken over my my life hence all the bags under the eyes and general sort of palette it's, complexion it's not because he's what playing what, what am i playing i'm playing at the moment i'm playing cyberpunk 2077 which is just awesome Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it, got it just before Christmas. And you know, the, the thing about these things, it's like the, the first few hours of I say few hours, the first few days, <laughs> you're kind of finding your way around, and the story's yet to kick in. And then many years later, the story kicks in, and then it just it just takes over your life. It's 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 like reading a really good novel, but one in which you are obviously the the central thing. It's it's great fun. I I love them, yeah. It's all wow. good fun. Now everyone's looking at me strangely as if oh, I No, no, I, 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 I sort of wish I got to grips with it because it does sound like, I, I get that and it does sound like it would be fun if I, but I, I, I don't really know what I'm doing. But no, it was, um, I've done mm. uh, the Mass Effect. And <gasps> that's, that's what Paul, that's, that's what one play. of my favourite yeah. all-time yeah. games. I didn't know you were in Mass Effect, really, <laughs> were you? I don't even... I don't even know what I did. I'd have to oh, right, I'm I'm googling now. You Google. Google. I, have to I have to do this now. I thought I had I had everything on you. I may have done bits and bobs. I don't know, but it was definitely. I've done bobs, I'll, I'll, I'll text Paul and I'll. Oh. Uh, you know, how was your evening? And it'll be like, oh, I was up till two or three a.m. playing Mass Effect. Mass Effect. And, uh, yeah, went, honestly, I, I love that game. Anyone who's played it will know exactly where I'm coming from. Brothers and sisters, you are out there. I know you know me, right? Uh, this is this is astonishing. There you are. Look, Mass Effects, Beth Chalmers. Yeah, but we're just doing bits and bobs in it. 
What was it? Bits and bobs. It doesn't doesn't say actually. That's a bit disappointing. Hold on. Yeah, I'm do you, sorry. Uh, do you find Beth with uh, so many things that you do, do? Do you remember everything, or you know? <laughs> No, I swear you probably yeah. like I don't and, and especially I think with video games you you go in and some of them are, are mainly about I know about video games is that they hurt. I did um oh god I don't even know what to say. Oh I did something something Troyish. Oh god no, oh, no. anyway sure. <laughs> and um and playing harpies and gar and and and, and uh, sirens and oh wow Hours and hours of going, I will bring you. Oh, God. <laughs> Not a thing. Not as you come down and hurt people. And either... Yes. So they, they hurt, but I have to commit. I like to commit. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. The, the, the acting in games is, you know, it's so much better these days than it was even a few years ago, it's, I think, really. Yeah, I, know, I think and... people are starting to understand it's, it's, quite yeah. a, it's quite a serious industry now, mm. I think. You know, it's, it's, it's a valid form of yeah. entertainment, like, you know, all, along... All the motion uh, capture movies. stuff is, is great. It just, it, it brings the, you know, the kind of cut scenes in, in games just to life. It's yeah. just so, so much better, you know, like, when I've been playing stuff and, and uh, you get a scene where it's obviously been done with people and then you get another bit where it's just dialogue and the characters just standing next to each other. And I know that's how you would shoot dialogue in a film, yeah. but it, it, it seems so sort of flat in a game for some reason when you then you get another scene where, you know, like I was playing Resident Evil a while ago and they're rolling under doors that are <laughs> shutting and they're throwing tables around and the, the doors are exploding with zombies and it's so well done. And, yeah. and because it's like a day in life, anyway. Eh, well, yeah, you know, and the way the camera <laughs> moves with it, and you know, you really feel kind of brought into this film, you know, version. Yeah. And, and I suspect the stuff that you, you play is like that as well, Paul. It's so much, yeah, just not know. zombies. Zombies make me feel ill. I, pl I played <laughs> The Last of Us a while ago when, when that was out, and that was an extraordinary game. It was unlike anything I've ever played. Yeah. And I'm so pleased to see it on the TV now. It's, um, you know, it's, it, it, but again, it's, it's almost like that. That's a sign of, well, I think it's a sort of sign of the recognition and validity of video games mm. as a credible, you know, piece of media mm. that, you know, maybe certain people of, of my sort of generation, maybe a little bit older, have a have a judge a, a judgment about them. They're destructive or whatever it is. But, you know, they're, they're really not you know, oh, like any piece of media. They yeah. could be. But like yeah. most pieces of media, they're not. They're, they're entertainment. They're enjoyable. And, and Escape I, is fun. Sometimes you learn stuff by by yeah. going through them as well. And, you know, I, I love the... Uh, we're Sorry, we're getting totally off track here, but I love the yeah. um, the art and the design work in these yes, things. Yes, you know, and it's, that. It's, it's mm, film. It's incredible. You know, film level mm. and, and beyond sometimes. It's, it's incredible looking at this stuff and kind of getting immersed in a world. Um, it, and it gets more and more sophisticated and yes. it becomes... A, an, I know all actors I know, that's the thing they're trying to get into because that's really, the, most of the really. work. Mm. Most yeah. of the work, you know, with all the, with Brexit sort of dampening down the animation industry, there's, mm -hmm. that's kind of harder to come by. But the only thing that is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger is a uh, constant okay. growth. Yeah. These games, yeah. Oh, well, well uh, talking of um, animation, it's, it's like we've I was just going to do that. I just oh, brought them up <laughs> now. I've got a little <laughs> list of animations here. <laughs> so, <laughs> little red tractor. Oh, oh yeah. Well, what's it like being a number block? It's great. Ah, I remember it's great because it's, it's just the biggest series I've ever done. I mean, everybody really? knows it. And I feel mm. what's amazing about it. And I can all I can say, I think it's incredible because it's not because of the you know me it's not because of the voices because the way they've written it the way they've designed mm. it and the animators and they the attention to detail is extraordinary mm. and it's i think it's brilliant and it my, just yeah, my, so my, my kids have all loved it you know we, mm. we've watched it my son is eight and a half and the twins are twin girls are five and they've all watched it we, we've bought the magazine we've had the you know the the block figures. You know we probably had a toy of you. you know, oh. <laughs> point, but yeah, it's it's really good, and you know the, there's a bit of singing in it, and you know it it has uh, it, you know interested and inspired them a bit with mm. maths and numbers, and you know that at that young age. So yeah, I think it's a really good show. It's, it's good. Nice. Good. No, I'm I'm very proud of being in it because I think it's pretty fantastic. So yeah. Uh, so yes, and it's again, it's one of the things we mm. you, know, you used to do cartoons in a group, and everyone would come in, and, and you could. But now, you know, money and efficiency, and smaller studios, and after yeah. you're doing it on your own, so you are doing a lot of voices for four hours. Yeah. And wow. What's that like when um you you're you're trying to 
record and deliver something, but you haven't got the, the, the recipient dialogue coming back. Did you find it hard doing that? Yeah, because sometimes I did a, a sort of an animation radio thing, a very mm. big sound thing. So it's still the animated characters. And the director was reading in with me. And it meant that I could give surprising, I could be just undercut and do mm. silly answers. And a lot more comedy could come out that way. But when you're doing it on your own, you can't depart too much because. Yeah. Yeah, because you can't pull the rug out from the scene or go a different direction or just yeah, you, you don't know what the other side is going to do. Yeah. yeah, I saw a little video on um YouTube a couple of weeks ago, and um, it was the, the guys who the, the, who play uh, the mum and dad on Bluey. Have, have you seen that? Oh, yeah, and yeah, it's, it's such a good show, and um, my kids love it probably as much as I do. Um, but they'd <laughs> been recording the show for like four years and they and they only just met in person. Oh, wow. LA they were flown out for the uh, live Bluey show and they were on Jimmy Fallon or something and it was the first sort of time they'd met you know and and they said sometimes they record so they can hear each other and sometimes they don't and and the dad actually is he's not a trained actor Mm. he was just a friend of someone on the production who said actually your voice is good do you want to read for this and now he's he's Bluey's dad um so I thought it must be must have been tricky for me and you know, you're probably absolutely bricking it when he went in. <laughs> you know, yeah. no, no experience, no one opposite him, but it, it just, it all fits together so well on the show. And, yeah. you know, they have, um, there's, there's the kids who play Bluey and Bingo, they, they've they kept them secret. Nobody nobody knows who they are. Um, oh, really? Yeah, which are they worried quite... they're going to get mobbed or something? I well, I, I think <laughs> they just wanted to kind of keep them having a childhood, you know. Yeah. Um, so, because I've looked in the credits and was like, who plays them? Oh, they're, they're not listed. And I was thinking, are they AI? You know. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, well, maybe they actually, are. Let, on, on that uh, topic, Beth, I'm, I'm not a fan of all that sort of thing, but I've heard about like AI voiceover work and stuff like that. What, what are your thoughts on it? Well, I mean, I don't want to become obsolete. <laughs> it's work. That's um, why I look at it. Yeah. I mean, as in, I mean, I, like audio books. No, like, no, audiobooks. like, um, you know, someone oh. was telling me that there's a there's an AI uh, program or app that will do a voiceover, yeah. you know, could create a voiceover. Oh. And, you know, so, so there's no need for people. And, and I know someone else who was getting his voice digitised to make an AI version of himself. He was and actively I, doing that. Oh, I would, no, I would yeah. know. And I, was, mm. I said, really? I find it a bit, it's like, you know, the AI art generator things and AI editing programs and stuff like that. Like, hello, creatives are here. And you know, mm. that, I feel like, like, like if I did that, if I somebody uh, recorded my voice to do digitized stuff, then I would always, then that version of me would always be churning out the most predictable, run of the mill, mm. obvious, unexciting. Exactly. Mm. To do the job, keep the curtain up, absolutely. But I, I I want people I want to be, to be surprising. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, you can't yeah. spontaneous. Yeah, <clears throat> you can't digitally create you know that little inf- inflection in the voice or that that you know tone in a reaction or something. Yeah. To, you know, yeah, it's it's not it's not, not yet. Well, yeah, let's <laughs> hope never. You know? <laughs> yeah. At the moment, mate, AIs can't even tell a difference between cookies and puppies. Well, it's true. And and did you see when Google launched their AI, they did this great big launch and then it, it, it got one of the questions wrong, got the answer wrong, and it, it cost them like millions yeah. of dollars in But in again, stock. May, maybe that's a sign that it's uh, the, the whole simulation is broken, mate. Well, maybe that's yeah. what it is, you know, because yeah. we yeah, anybody could get a question wrong. I could ask you a question that you know you know the answer to, and you could just give me a whole load of old nonsense in response to it. So what you're saying is it's become self-aware and it's yep. tricking us by, yeah. you know, Exactly, yeah. that's exactly yeah. what I'm saying. Next yeah. step. The stage anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I've gone blank. <laughs> Corpse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Like... Oh, sorry, I was... <laughs> No, no, I was just um, <laughs> rounding it up with a kind of, yes, I don't like the idea of it at all. Don't like yeah. the idea of that. No, 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 that's it. So um, what's what's next on the horizon for you, Beth? What's What's lined up? Any ideas? Um, you can are, tell us about obviously. Yeah, we'll, we'll beep. So. I mean, we'll beep anything that you know is top secret. Just give us a wink when we need to beep it. Well, I don't. You know? My trouble is I never know whether things need to be beeped. I've just I recorded. <laughs> a, I've just done a little bit in an Apple mm. TV series, which I think. Oh. Now now it's in post production, so that should be out soon. Right. 
I mean, it's not a massive part, <laughs> <laughs> and it's good and it's funny. Mm. Um, and uh, and I'm and yeah. I've got a, a, a project in with the BBC at the moment. Oh wow! Which, uh, still waiting to hear stuff about that. So it's always yeah. Is that for a TV series as well, or it'll be a TV a sort of hopefully sort of three one hours. Brilliant. So a bit true crimey and a bit cool. So uh, Ooh, yeah, having yeah, done Mystic, yeah. the, Mystic, you know, with the kids when I would it's. Mm. And drama, so that's kind of cool. Um, and then, uh, cart. Uh, I'm doing. I'm doing number blocks at the moment. I'm still doing. Odo. Hey. Odo's coming back to my kids. Odo, the kids in Odo. Oh. Love is it? <laughs> Amazing. Is it a little Northern Irish? No, the little Northern Irish kid is. It? That's a great Northern answer. Irish. All right, so that's what <laughs> it is. I. Fantastic. I just oh. Yeah, he's Brilliant. A cutie. And um, and both though, both those kids are extraordinary, actually. Yeah. Um. So uh, yeah, more of that. Um, mm. You know, you ask me, you think, what am I doing? What am yeah. I? Doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't, didn't, didn't want to make you doubt yourself. Now <laughs> there is work, I think. I, I'm sure I've got stuff. I'm, to I'm do. sure I had yeah. loads of work on him. I yeah. have got loads of work, but actually, now you mention it, I don't know why I bother. <laughs> I'm going to yoga or not? I am. I'll tell you what, I am practicing. I am learning the piano. Oh wow, terrible. that's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> time. Oh yeah, I'm terrible at it. And then I watched the piano on um. Mm. So that, that reality show with people learning. Oh, yeah, it's quite good, though, isn't it? Yeah, well, they're amazing. And, and yeah. full of, it's full of people going, um, well, I have, I'm not very musical. I'd never played before. And I, I just got a keyboard and watch some YouTube videos. And then, mm. and I'm still there going, da, 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 da. <laughs> and I was really trying to get both hands to work together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron, yeah. I'm not a natural, but it's really, I think it's good for the soul. Good for mm. the soul. I always wish I could play the piano. I, I used to say, I used to play the keyboards in a band years ago, but that was literally just one hand and I could do that. So ask me to do stuff with the other hand and it all just goes to complete pop. <laughs> so it was, it was no good. No good at all. Guitar, I was a little bit better. I could do guitar. Yeah. Trumpet. I could play the trumpet as well. That was my, that was my key thing when I was at school. I could play I the band. trumpets. Yeah. Yeah. I played in a little rock band in, you know, when I was at school, uh, you know, just go down to Covent Garden to record, lay down the occasional track, and uh, <laughs> you know, just bang something out there. It was it was great. Underground grunge, you name it. Yeah, yeah. It was all it was all pretty cool. Uh -huh. And then we just got wasted, failed our A levels, and everyone went their separate ways. You know, we went through the entire lifespan of a band before we we were nineteen. There you go. Well, that's you quite. You really did. Spot, I thought you, did, I you, were, you were being ridiculous, but you were ridiculous. No, no, I did actually play in a band. <laughs> no, no, that's, <laughs> no, 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 that's just his normal. Band. <laughs> it's it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, really enjoyed it, and I still miss it. Still miss it. It's good fun. Yeah. Do it. Do it again. You sh you should make a theme tune yeah. for the podcast. We we had this. We had this when when we had John Johnny Johnny Mathers on, didn't we? Yeah. Johnny oh, yeah. Mathers Mathers. So, yeah. so he he played passenger in Doctor Who Flux. The, the, Really tall guy wore mask the whole time. Yeah, and he's he's a he's a proper it. muso as well, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, rock um, meathead. In fact, talking of metalhead, do you know uh, the God of War games? It's like um, it's, it's Kratos, isn't it, Paul? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. quite a big series, and and uh, the character was really tall, bald, tattooed, and um, Johnny uh, did cosplay stuff for him. Anyway, he got hired to be the official. Kind of character for the game and, and sent out to mm. LA and did That's the launch nice. of it and stuff. So that was really cool for him. Yeah. 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 Really yeah. yeah. It's a good good story that. He's yeah. a good guy as well. Great guy. We, yeah, we love really, Johnny. Really nice. Yeah. Making it happen. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Take those opportunities and run with it. Well, Try not to be as we're saying, you, you've got That's to make your own luck. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you do. So, uh, Beth, I've, I've probably got one more. Well, we could talk all night, but I'm aware it's, it's getting on. Um, I've got one more <laughs> question. If you could do any big finish with any doctor uh, or any any companion, uh, who would who would they be and what would the story <gasps> be? Best question. Uh, well, because mm, I love working with Sylvester, mm. but I also like working with nicola nicola bryant no oh, nicola walker. nicola walker sorry yeah. yes and 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 that would be quite cool mm. um i oh 
I make a, a mismatch of all of them. But then I also quite like quite like the when Paul McGann, Paul McGann swishes around a lot. Um, Does he? Does he? Yeah. I can imagine him doing yeah. that. Yeah. Probably, could say, but both, I think Paul McGann and, and Sylvester have got mm. um, such a sense of panic in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. They're both kind of quite, the energy's like that. Yeah. So you, maybe you couldn't have two of them in one room. Um, <laughs> I feel bad picking one, but um, uh, who do I... Oh, I want to see all of them. That's what rubbish. Oh, Alex McQueen. I'd like to work with Alex McQueen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a master, was, isn't he? I was at, I was at National Youth Theatre with him, and then right. I was at university with him. And I've I've done like half a day with him a million years ago, and I think he's really good, and I would like to work with him. Mm. I would like it to be a high energy. Weirdly, I did just do a story that I that I loved, but I can't tell you about it. <laughs> and I played, I played my ideal character. Oh, really? Oh, did you? Oh, wow. Yeah. Was like, oh, yeah. Um, annoyingly. Um, yes. Uh, I'd like to do full drama. Mm. Um, not too much running and explosions. You know when you're always running down corridors and everything? <laughs> yeah, it happens to me every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm not, 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 this isn't a great answer, is it? I feel like I'm... That's a good answer. No, it's good. Yeah, yeah I'm enjoying it. I, I, I'm, I'm enjoying the physicality that's going with the answers. I like that. I think a John Dorney script, which has got yes. a comedy, and mm. with Alex McQueen and Nicola Walker and, yeah. and lots of other people, frankly. Every day when I go turn up, there's always someone I think, oh, she's great. He's great. And the last yeah, thing yeah, with, yeah. with brand new people, there's a whole uh, cast. I didn't know any of them. <laughs> I fell in love with them all. And, yeah. Oh, but, brilliant. Like, well, so, so yeah, you've, you've just pitched a you know an idea there. So hopefully John was listening, Nick maybe. Yes, well we know they listen to our podcast. They do in secret because obviously Big Finish yeah. have their own podcast which they yes. have to public support. But we know in secret they they're hanging on to every episode of ours. It's well, true. I, did, I did say I wanted to do something, and he said, "Well, we're listening." But I there you were. I said I wanted to be Strax's. Um, yeah. Sort of sister, long lost sister. Oh, that could be, be fun. I want to be a female Strax, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just that sort of it's like, where does that like prim confusion? Of, yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I said, You're I talking it. stupid human. Ah, kill the human scum. Yeah. <laughs> so I think a bit of Strax with Dan Starkey and Alex McQueen. Yeah. There you go. Yes, that, that would be good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, Dan Starkey, there, there, there's a name we we, we should try and get hold of. Yeah, we we yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get in touch with him. If, yeah, just find a way. <laughs> I'll tell him. I'll tell him to uh, to follow you and. Uh... Oh, yeah, 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 just, yeah, just do, slip yeah. it into conversations. One, one somehow, day I, Beth, I, and, I, yeah. I dream that, uh, you know, someone well, they wake finished. up with, with a Sontaran, uh, Sontaran <laughs> Dan Stark. No, it's it's more mundane than that. But one I'm day I'm in my bed, <laughs> human scum. Get out of one side, I'll set out a grenade <laughs> down your throat. What is, what is your dream? <laughs> <laughs> it's not that, I can tell you. No, it's not that. Oh, okay. <laughs> that uh, someone from Big Finish or something messages us and says, Oh, I've heard you're quite good. We'd love to come and have a chat with you. So that that would be pretty awesome. But but you kind of you know that's kind I of did. We, yeah you did didn't you yeah we we were yeah. chatting yeah there you go like, exactly yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, is that not enough? It's not enough. <laughs> well, you know, we initiated it. It wasn't I'll, a cold. It wasn't a cold DM, was it? I'll spread the, the I'll spread the word. Yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, that's that's and brilliant. That, and in fact, I'm doing some things on Friday. So. Are you? Ooh. It's yes. exciting. It's exciting things. Yes, yeah. is, is it's fabulous. Actually, a lot of reading in, but um, there may yeah. be, but uh, with somebody who's not in this country. I'll leave. <laughs> so, oh, oh, you yeah. can't leave it like that. Beth, we've got no now. You've got all the suspenders and everything. Oh, oh um, cool. I have to record at 10 o'clock in the evening because... Uh, yeah. Well, what hemisphere? Time difference. There she is. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Jeff, Jeff's going there. He's, he's trying to think. You can see yeah. the steam coming yeah. out of his out of his very, uh, hands. Very mm. exciting. Very charismatic. Ooh. Very fun. Very fun. Very fun. And um, have, have and, has she done it before? Oh yes. Okay. <laughs> mm. Still interesting. I just know big finish. But I I know yeah. that. 
I know mm. that I haven't even done it yet means that <laughs> 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 that's probably something I should keep to myself. <laughs> <laughs> the fact of her, yeah, the, everyone knows the fact of her, so the fact is. Mm. Yeah, you know, you've been you've been vague enough. I right? I can't. Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, yeah, there'll, yeah. there'll be no yeah. you know red targets appearing on you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, and we we won't get the knock on the door. Excuse yeah. me, uh, who C two C podcast? Um, <laughs> yeah. We understand that you have been fishing for a privileged information that is so far <laughs> confidential and under a non disclosure agreement. I, I know David Richardson would just go, oh, Beth, really? <laughs> Again. <laughs> really? There's always one. <laughs> are, are you like the Tom Holland of, um, of Big yeah. Finish there? Tom, <laughs> Tom Holland cannot keep Marvel secrets. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> he has to walk around. He can never be yeah. interviewed alone now, can he? He has to no, have someone else with he, him just to show he, him up. He has to be filled with bur burning his script so that, you know, <laughs> yeah. he, he can't risk leaving it around anywhere. <laughs> yeah, well, they don't. Uh, like, this is the thing. I, we can record something for Big Finish. And three years later, they, 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 something gets released that goes, mm. release the new thing. You think, I did that years yeah. ago. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how would I have not known to, to I could have easily talked about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That you, different, you could have forgotten yeah. about it. You could have done it, forgotten about it, talked about it, forgotten about it again, yeah. and then it comes out. <laughs> then it like, comes oh. out, yeah. <laughs> I think that might be what happens a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, it does. For what, yeah, from we've spoken to other people and they said, you know, I recorded something, you know, last year, hasn't come out yet. Or, yeah, you know, it, it, I've did it last month, but I know it'll be next year when it comes out. It's it's quite a long schedule sometimes on it. Yeah. So, yeah, not, I'm not surprised you forget stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this has been a lot of fun. Yeah, I've really thank enjoyed you, Beth. It's, it's, it's been, been really good. Thank brilliant. you for joining us. Oh, uh, yeah, thank you. I'm so sorry about <laughs> I have to go and buy some new headphones. Now. Yeah, oh, yeah. No. but we should just tell... That's an opportunity. For, yeah, Beth's How long headphones have you had those? Oh, yes, well. Yeah, Beth, Beth's headphones packed up, dear listeners, before we, we said hello, and then she couldn't hear us anymore, and they literally failed on you there and then, didn't they? Yeah, I, I said, I could hear you, I could hear you, and then just mm. nothing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I like them. Have you, have, you, have you had those headphones for long beth are they i think when lockdown started we all started doing this oh yes yeah. so maybe to how long do headphones last Is, should they be probably, probably a little bit longer than that in yeah, fairness, yeah, but... Honest, but you probably use them quite a bit <laughs> i would think don't you yeah every day i'm in here yeah mm. so you know they've probably got a shorter lifespan than most headphones would be Getting expected to have yeah. Yeah. Or, or or unless you have corrosive ears or something I, I, yeah i don't know but you know Possibly. I, I, <laughs> I mean, me personally, I can get through headphones because I sweat a lot and that oh, can yeah. get into the pads, mm. you know? Gosh. Years. Gosh. What, what a note to end I'm this. I'm just going to leave you with <laughs> that image now, yeah. right? Just, just let's let's end it on that one. There we go. And if if um if you're only listening to the podcast, you can go on the YouTube version, and check out Paul's sweaty ears there. So yeah. treat yourself to that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That that'll be the punishment, Jeff. Yeah. Not not Zero. sure what for yet, but Zero that, views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thumbs down all the way. <laughs> Paul's headphones are really, really sweaty. I don't like this at all. I'm calling the police. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the headphone police they yeah. exist they're real sweaty ear please mm -hmm. <laughs> right oh. before this goes into yeah, this any, is, this any is further crazy, into yeah. the realms of nonsense <laughs> Beth Chalmers it has been a delight yeah, and thank a you real very pleasure much. having you on our podcast thank you so much for delighting us with your witty repartee and your fabulous stories of behind the scenes shenanigans of Big Finish and all the rest of it and I wish you every success yeah. in whatever you do next yeah, we're looking yeah, we look forward, forward to, seeing, to it. seeing and thank hearing you. what comes next yeah. It's been a joy to talk thank to you. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Beth. <laughs> Take care. See you soon. You too. Bye-bye. 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 Take care.